I'm Lewis Budko. News next at 1 o'clock. Jim Vannon has St. Catharines mayoral candidates Jeff Birch and Peter Secord in studio. A book for Wanderers is live playing in studio, and it all starts now on the Jim Vannon Show on News Talk 610 CKTB. This is the Jim Vannon Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now. 905-688-2582-1877-610-2582 or text us at 61010. I've made one mistake in my life. I should have burned a Berlin down. And now the drugs are slowly wearing off. I'm Jim Fan. <laughs> A beautiful Sunday to you, live from the White House of Talk, right here at 12 Yates Street. The Jim Fannin Show, you can count on some solid guests, some good interviews, an average host, and rock stars. Playing live music, we're all nice. We'll get to them in a second. They're warming up, they're all set up. A book for Wanderers is in today. We got a tight hour. Birch and Secord are in. Along with some other neophytes, Mark Stevens, Adam Arsenault, and Clayton Beach. The Common People Campaign. Clayton, if you want some pub, man, you got to get your paperwork in. So we'll talk to Secord first at 1215, Birch at 1230. Then I'll wrap it up and get a book for... A book for Wanderers in to tell us what they got coming up. The race for mayor is heating up nicely. I think there's a lot of people maybe sitting back, waiting to see if we have a provincial election. My take has always been that Andrea Horvath that holds the hammer at the province as far as the balance of power goes will continue to prop up this government. But if she doesn't, you can bet that no one is going to look at the municipal race, except maybe Toronto, until that provincial election's over. What do you want to see from the next mayor of St. Catharines? We know we're going to have a new one. The two of the leading candidates, what I consider to be the leading candidates, are... Councillors right now sit next to each other at council. We need more candidates, actually. And I think that uh, as time goes on, there's been lots of names that we floated around. We certainly will see some more come out of the woodwork. Not that these guys aren't great guys, but they were McMullen clones as far as their voting record goes. So we're going to talk to them, find out how they're different what their plan are. A little bit more diversity would be nice. I'd love to see a woman run again. Any ideas on who we could get to step up, take that top job? So we will take your calls, 905-688-2582. Are your digits, one 610 cktb Pound 610 on the... Bell Mobility Network, or you can text straight into the booth here. 61010 is the text. Why would these guys want to run for mayor? We're going to ask them that. Obviously, Birch has got some political experience, not only as a city councillor, but Identified with the NDP. Peter Secord electing not to run in the safe seat that is his council seat and put his name forward to mayor. For mayor. So, we will get to that after this break. A book for Wanderers comes in. They're going to play a few bumpers for us. Then we'll talk to them at the end of the show. Peter Secord is next. Then Bert's at 1230. And then we'll wrap it up with a little closing segment and talk to the book. Uh, Jeez. A book for wanderers. James Underwood, Anthony Botting. 
We're loaded in the booth today. Coming up, we got a couple nice guests, too. We'll get to that at the end of the show. We'll tease it. Right here on 610 CKTB. is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. Welcome back. I am Jim Finn, and that is a book for Wanderers. Alicia, Alicia running the board today. Nicely done. Got a newbie in the booth. David Jones' last show last week. Peter Secord, I appreciate you taking the time to come into the show. You announced your run for mayor some time ago. Tell me, what do you want to do this, Pete? Jim, you're looking at me like that's a bad thing. <laughs> oh, come on. I see um, the 12 guys. Is it 12 guys you sit around with there? The horseshoe. We 13 could go of us. Don't, there's 13, Jimmy. With the mayor. you got to count the mayor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so going around the horseshoe here, we got Yip, Williamson, Phillips, Harris, Stack, Birch, mm-hmm. Secord, Dodge, Elliott, 
Kushner, Cisco, Stevens. Is that Correct. the way they sit? Yep. Yeah. You and Bertrand at the top of the horseshoe. I've been at that horseshoe yes, a few you times. Yes, you off, Jim. You it know, was, having was... to come. You know, that's when the pool was a six lane pool, and I thought it should be. Well, I didn't and I was think I got to stick recruited. The budget, and you didn't. You wanted to blow the budget. I remember that. <laughs> we didn't hurt the budget. We didn't hurt parking. <laughs> no, we didn't take out trees, like Brian said, <laughs> and we built the right product. I shouldn't have to come up there and tell you guys that stuff. You know what? Um, that's what's important about people showing up to council, Jim. Yep. you got to show up to council, give your opinion, and it was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a wonderful building. Everybody that goes in there, if I comments, still I did, I haven't gotten awesome. in, but I've never seen it. I think come somebody would come and say, hey, you know, we named the two lanes, the two extra lanes the after you. Lanes? <laughs> At least you want to come and see it? Yeah. No, no. It's, 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 a great, it's a great building, and thanks for being involved. We need to see more of that. More people need to step up to the plate and let their opinions out there, work progressively towards better things. What's the motivation what for you? Um... My age, Jim. I'm uh, 52. Uh, my career, uh, business career, I've always worked for myself. Um, been on council. This is th- I've just done three terms. Uh, either I run the show, or I say sayonara, thanks very much. Okay. Um, that, that's that's one of the things. And you know, I knew was g- I'm going to get asked this question, and I've been thinking about it. It's just the thing I think I need to do next. Okay. It's it's what I need to do, and I, I'm I'm prepared to do it, and I'm happy to do it, and I'll be honored to do it. What are your strengths? What do you think you bring to the table? Um, I think the biggest thing I bring to the table is I can work with people. I can see the strengths in different people, and I know where to go when I need expertise and who to bring it. Um, I'm not the guy with all the answers, but I know that when it's time and you're looking for answers, how to find them, and you bring people together to do that. Uh, I think that's what I'll do. I'll be the sales guy. I'll be the leader here. Uh, I'll take everybody by the hand and put them in the room, and then we'll, when we come up with the right idea, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the champion of the cause. Now tell us a little bit about where uh, our, our city debt payments are going to be going up dramatically in the next coming yeah. term. Yeah. W- what's your strategy for that? I mean, uh, if we just throw it on the taxpayer, it's going to be a big hit. We could be talking 10% to well, cover that debt payment. What, what's your strategy for handling there's, that? There's two budgets you got to remember. Okay, There's right. the operating budget, which is the annual one. Everybody focuses on that. Every year my taxes are going up 1% or 2 or 3%. Um, I've always tried to keep them in, in inflationary numbers. A lot of folks in town, uh, even, that hurts them even. Um, you know, a lot of people don't get those increases from year to year. But anyway, the operating budget is the first thing. The other one is the capital budget and where we're spending money. Is when we build a road, we don't pay cash for it. We take a debenture. We borrow money. And that money pile just is going to go from 90 to $140 billion or million. So it, it's going to jump up dramatically. So we pay a percentage of the operating budget to pay that down. My thinking is that we need to really take a look at that and decide where we need to be. We need to look at all our services. And this means I don't think council needs to do this. I think council needs to be the ones to put on the table. And then folks like yourself and everybody needs to come to the table and say, listen, do we really need this building? Do we need two golf courses? Should we own a golf? Do we need to be in the golf course business? I don't know. Can we make money at it? If we can, let's make some changes. But we need to review everything that we own. We have a lot of buildings and properties that the city owns. We need to, if we can take that and convert that into 10 or $20 million and drop that down, great. The other thing I want to see is right now we've got Shakluna coming online that's going to make us money. I think we need to push hydro and say, where else can we put a hydro plant? Where else can we start to make money? We need to start to make money for the taxpayer elsewhere than asking them for money. Awesome. Now, how do you distance yourself from the mayor? I mean, Birch is in next. I've heard him referred to with McMullen as the Bobsy Twins. It voted the same way on a lot. Of, you, you yourself, deputy mayor, yeah. voted, supported Brian on a lot of these big yeah. initiatives. Yeah. Well, how, moving forward, how do you see your strategy different than what Brian's well, done? We're, we're completely two different individuals, as Jeff and I are. We have different life experiences. Um, when the mayor's the mayor, you have to respect him and let him lead his way. Brian's done things that I would never do that way. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm, uh, I w- would always be right. Uh, that's the beauty about council. You can have a debate, decide who's, who, you know, listen to the other others around the table, and then take the right course of action. Yes, I voted for three of the major projects that we're moving ahead with, but how could you not? They're all great projects. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's things that Brian has done, and I, I don't want to get into that, that I don't like, and I'm sure he doesn't like the, the, the way I took uh, issue with some of the things that he didn't like. But that's what you do. You have constructive debates, you shake hands after, and you move on. Peter Secord is my guest. You will take your calls if you have any, 905-682-582. Peter, tell me, moving forward, what, what do you see as priorities? Um, I, think the debt, I, I think the debt is the, is the priority to begin with. And what's uh, the solution for that? 
Well, I think I just told you. I think it's we've got to go through our services, do a core core review, and look at the things that we've got. Uh, I mean, Brian took credit for saying that he brought in zero based budgeting, but I'm not sure how. Complete no, the, no, the no. Best. I mean, I was on the budget. Brian's been on the budget. Is that something you'd look at? Uh, you know, when you when Starting you talk from to the, scratch, you talk every to the accountants, zero based budgeting is just throwing the old one out out the window and starting from scratch. Um, Accounting is accounting. You can do anything with the numbers. I think it's about wh- where your bills and what you're paying. I think if you get, we, we all know that if we have something we can't afford, we cut it loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that those are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Do we really want to cut some of these things? How loose? do you accomplish that when we, we're losing people in the city? We're not growing. Um, uh, you've got to ask everybody's opinion on what they want. I mean, I hope we're not losing people. My idea is that I think Niagara's on the cusp of of moving forward. The things that we've got downtown happening uh, Brock University we've got two education uh, uh, big education uh, bonuses that nobody else has you've got Niagara College and, and Brock we can, people are coming I want to keep my kids here I want to that's what I'm actually you asked me about motivation I want to keep our kids here mm-hmm. people want to live here people come from Toronto and they move in here I got a couple of good friends that have moved down here started businesses they love it here we've got lots of people that that are unemployed that we can put to work we've got I mean, what do you area? say it's a, it's a priority, but I mean, we've already got the debt that we've got, but, uh, you know, what do you see as a bi- uh, what, St. Catherine's biggest challenge right now? What would you say is? I guess it's getting people back to work. You know, we don't really municipally control it's, that it's, too much. It's, it's, no, we don't. It's a provincial and a federal yeah. level, but we've, you've got to, you've got to toss the ball to them and say, Hey, but I, I think you've got to create the right, we've got to create the right atmosphere. You've got to certainly. You know, I think it's easier to create business than it is to re- recruit jobs. You know, well, like this weekend, we've got a cheer competition in Niagara Falls. Every hotel in the region's booked. Yeah, so that's good. Bringing business isn't as tricky. Yeah, as but those jobs don't jobs. pay well. What, what, what you want to do is encourage small business. I've been a small business guy all my life, uh, so I know what it's like to try and start up a small business. But if I can employ three or four guys and get a business running, you get ten guys doing that. Now you're starting to employ people. We need to work on small business and make sure that they have the the tools. That they need to be able to hire people to pay the bills and and move forward in this town. And St. Catharines is a great spot to do it. Everybody, there's a lot of people that are negative about our town. We've got everything here that one could imagine. We got lakes on both sides of us. We're close to the border. We've got, you know, it, it's just a great spot. Why? Yeah, I'd like to hear a lot, you know more people talk about what we do well here and, yeah. and grow and and, and capture you know our strengths and grow on those strengths. I mean, we got a really unique look at the the talent we've got music wise. Yeah. We've got a great art, arts and culture. Uh, it's going to get, it's gonna going get better. Yeah, it's going to get downtown's better. Downtown's going to get better. Yep. It already has gotten better. Yep. So I really appreciate your time, Pete. Thanks for, for coming. In. We'll Jim. probably do this again. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm really I'm, early into the campaign, but I appreciate it's, making you know, some let's time get through the summer. When can we expect the uh, platform and whatnot to be out? Sometime in. Me. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it, Pete Secord. It was my guest, Jeff Birch. Will be up next. A book for Wanderers is playing live. Bumpers on the way. And we will take your calls now in the last segment. Let me get some business done here. The Jim Fannin Show right here on 610 CKTV. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at Welcome back. I'm Jim Fannin. Jeff Birch sits with me in the booth today. Birchie, thanks for taking time. I appreciate it. Why the hell do you want to be mayor of these 12 turkeys? <laughs> I got his help. You'd be a whole new set of turkeys. <laughs> yeah, it could be, yeah. <laughs> thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. What oh, do you no see problem. as top priorities? You can't say jobs. Well, I, that is actually the top priority. If you, if you look at the, you know, I've done some polling, actually, and uh, jobs is by far the number one concern. I think taxes is, is also up there, keeping taxes down. 
is uh, you know the probably the second highest concern. What's your, of what's your solution for that kind of stuff? You got a policy on them? Well, I'm gonna I'll, I will have a very substantial uh, policy for economic development, and I have some specific ideas I'll be uh, putting out very soon. I can talk about a, a couple of them. Uh, it's much of my uh, my platform will be around uh, downtown revitalization. Um, I have a motion coming to council tomorrow night on uh, manufacturing jobs, which is, uh, and a lot of people, uh, you know, these aren't smokestack jobs. These are, you know, attracting 20, 30 jobs at a time and uh, doing what a lot of other uh, communities are doing with respect to attracting high-tech manufacturing jobs, which have, uh, you know, spin off of uh, up to 19 jobs uh, per manufacturing job, and those are the kinds of jobs that uh, you can raise a family on. So, very important for for a city to attract those. Now, when I ask people around town, the maybe the not, not so politically astute, the majority mm-hmm. probably, uh, people identify you with the NDP. Why did you decide to not wait this? See if something. I know you got ties with the NDP. It seems that your skill set certainly matches the provincial uh, platform or, or mm-hmm. moving forward on that. Why did you decide to jump in and not? Not wait to see what happened municipally, run for mayor rather than NDP provincially. Uh, one of the things I like about uh, municipal politics is actually uh, being able to get beyond the partisanship. So uh, right now I'm actually putting together a great uh, campaign team, and it's already uh, has representatives from four different political parties uh, on my team. Makes for some really interesting campaign meetings. Um, but uh, I. That's one of the things I like about municipal politics, and my campaign is going to be all about uh, bringing people together. It's not going to be about uh, parochialism and partisanship and uh, things that divide people. Now, how do you differentiate yourself from the mayor? You voted and supported him, so as Peter Secord, he was just in asking the same question. Moving forward, or, I mean, how do you get out from underneath? You know, if people look, are looking for change, it might not be Jeff Birch or Peter Secord. Well, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest with with people about my voting record, and um, you know, I I uh, fully endorse the direction that the city's taken over the last couple of terms. So it's not going to be so much differentiating from the mayor; it's that it's a different time. So you know, we've kind of turned the page on that uh, investing in in large infrastructure. We've taken on all the debt we care to take, and now it's going to be about using that to leverage uh, jobs and investment. Uh, and, and bring investment into our community so so uh, we can have those jobs that will uh, allow our community to grow. Jeff Birch is running for mayor in St. Catharines. Andy P., uh, you want to apply for the campaign position, campaign manager position, Andy P.? Mr. Fannin. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. We, we lost you. I didn't hear your response. I said I'm going to worry about my own campaign. Oh, there you go. Starters. Okay. You're not running for mayor, though, just the region, right? Yeah, absolutely. My, I got I got two very quick questions. One, Jim, I want to know if 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 Jeff is committed to end the uh, spending on these downtown public projects next term. I know there was this uh, current mayor had eyes on uh, rejuvenating Market Square, City Hall, and everything else. But will Jeff commit to stopping that? I also want to know Jeff's comments on why why I'm under the impression he believes the municipality's primary goal is business retention and the region's is attraction. I would think both should be doing both jobs. So downtown spending, is it, is it, can we assume it's going to end? And uh, what's the role of the municipality? Retention, attraction, or both? Thanks, guys. No problem. Thanks, Andy. Okay, thanks for the question, Andy. First of all, um, the not just downtown, but all spending on major infrastructure projects is at an end. That was a uh, had to do with stimulus uh, funding and had to do with competing with other municipalities to to build the city. So, um, you know that that's we've turned the page on that. And and city, I, I support the city's direction that we're committed to keeping uh, the debt uh, topped out at ten percent of the operating budget for for servicing the debt. So that's not going to allow us to. We've turned that page. Now it's about using those those things to attract uh, jobs. Um, the second question, um, which was? Oh, the role of municipalities in the region as far as retention and attracting uh, business. Yes. So he, he's referring to my manufacturing motion that's coming up tomorrow night. We have the CAO of the region uh, appearing to speak to it. Um, and I... In, in my motion, I'm just recognizing what currently exists, and I, I'm probably in agreement with them on this, because at the current time, the
the the main priority of the city is uh, retention and expansion, and the main priority of the region, uh, they work on attraction. And I'm not sure I agree with that split, and I think that there should be closer uh, cooperation. So I'm going to be advocating that, um, you know, we have a, a new spirit of cooperation between the city and the region, and that's what we need uh, in order to attract jobs. Well, talk to me a little bit about the, the debt repayment schedule, and I understand that we're going into a heavier payment on that. How is that going to affect the taxpayer? Well, it, the the debt, I mean, we've already made those commitments. So we, uh, I mean, we take out debt. And we don't do it all at once. So the, the debt is going to grow, but it's not going to grow uh, beyond 10%. So what that means is that um, the, the province considers 5 to 10% of the operating budget to service a debt as moderate. So council has uh, passed a motion that we're going to keep it under 10%. Um, so that's going to take some discipline. And and, uh, but we're committed to doing it. A lot of municipalities are in the high debt category, which is above 10%. The limit is 25. But we don't want to spend more than 10% of our operating budget servicing debt. So that th- spending on major projects is at an end uh, for some time. And, and now we have to concentrate on using the, those projects to leverage investment. What do you see as the most significant challenges facing the city right now? Uh, jobs, uh, for sure. I mean, we're one of the highest unemployment areas, and, and that's... But again, I told, you know, like I said with Peter, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's not really up to the municipalities. We're not, we could be recruiting, but, uh, you know, I think it's far easier to bring business. And like this weekend, I said, mm-hmm. you know, we've got a, a cheer competition in Niagara Falls. Every hotel room in the, in the region is booked. So sure. bringing business isn't, and I think we could do more in that. You know, we've got an underutilized mm-hmm. thing in, in the Grape and Wine Festival, Niagara Wine Festival. I mean, mm-hmm. that could be so much more. So uh, how, do you, how do you address that when jobs really isn't under the control of the mayor or city council? Well, there are lots of things that you can do to create jobs and, and not create jobs, but attract investment. And I think that... Isn't it more just creating an atmosphere for business to thrive in than it yeah. is recruiting new businesses? and new punch clocks? Absolutely. And and downtown development, for example, when you look at having the right amenities and uh, being a place, uh, having an exciting downtown that, that companies want to move to, that's important. But I think we also have to be uh, friendly to other ideas. There's um, uh, the issue of um, exporting honeybees, for example, which is something that uh, is being talked about right now and uh, very, very important uh, to look for new ways to attract jobs. Jeff Birch is on the phone. I'm sorry, Jeff Birch is... Joe's on the phone. How are you, Joe? Thanks for calling. Jeff, Joe here. Hi, Joe. Yeah, Joe Pizzati here. Hey, how are you? Sir, years ago we talked about moving the market square. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hello? Yep, I Talk hear you. Is there anything being said about that? I got neighbors here, and even myself, we come up to shop at the market. You can't park. There's no room. They get frustrated, and we go home. Yeah. Wouldn't you think the market square maybe out in the open would be better and bigger for everybody? I think you're going to see some changes to that to that whole area uh, downtown. I'm not sure about moving the the market, um, but uh, certainly I, I you know agree with you that uh, we could have more parking there. Um, what what has been talked about is creating a larger walking area, and so you might have an expansion of of the the market. Um, you know, we've talked about, uh, for example, an outdoor rink in uh, on James Street, uh, closing down certain certain streets. If you look at downtowns in Ontario that have revitalized, um, you know, that's the kind of public area that you have. Okay. Jeff Birch is with me. I appreciate it, Jeff. We're going to take a break right here, and I appreciate you coming in, man. We'll get you Thanks, Jim. more down the road. <laughs> Much appreciated. Anytime. Jeff Birch, Peter Secord, my thanks go out to you. A book for Wanderers is jamming us out. More right after this on 610 CKTV. Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610.
Call now. 905-688-2582. 1-877-610-2582. Or text us at 61010. Wanderers in today. Thanks for joining us. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, at Jim Fannin. The Facebook, the, the show has a Facebook page now. Get out there and like it, and announcements will be coming out of there too. Really want to say thanks to Peter Secord and Jeff Birch. Good conversation. We'll spend some more time with them. One segment's not enough. Sorry, guys, but we wanted to get on it, start the debate. Did you know donations in Toronto to political campaigns at the municipal level are tax-deductible? You actually get a refund back. Just like the province. The province, if you cut your political, provincial political candidate a check for 400 bucks, you get 300 back, even if you don't make money. I wonder, would changing that at the municipal level take the business out of politics? Because... The only people that really benefit right now from giving to a municipal or a mayoral political campaign municipally are businesses that can write it off. There's no benefit for the electorate or the ratepayer to give money to these candidates. So does that mean that business influences businesses don't vote? I, I'd like to look at it. Toronto does it. Why can't we do it? And I think in this whole municipal conversation with the election coming up, quality of life is something that we should get on. I think that's probably the most important thing. And undervalued real estate in Niagara is an indicator of demand. We've seen other areas blow up. And Go Transit's got to be the solution for that. You can buy a three-bedroom brick bungalow in the north end of St. Catharines, two blocks from the lake. For about two hundred thousand bucks, it's a joke. What a great deal! St. Catharines and Niagara region is, is real estate wise. It's not always going to be that way. And if the go gets here, that will change. I think we can seize on our arts and culture. We got a great scene out here. And speaking of scene, scene music fest, arts and culture. I mean, we have got a great local music, mus- musical talent, and bands here. And speaking of which. Dudes, thank you very much for coming in. I Jimmy, appreciate what's it. up, man? Thanks for having us. Now tell me, what's uh, where are you guys from, where you been, and what you got coming up? A uh, book for Wanderers. Yeah, we're from the Falls. Where's the name come from? Unique name? <laughs> yeah, it just came from actually the theme of the, our first record, kind of, and it was about being feeling kind of lost and stuff. So we were going to... We were looking for the project name, and James actually just said, I was going to name the record that, but James had the idea of naming the project that, so... We went with it. James Underwood, Anthony Bodding, James, uh, where, where are you from? I'm from Niagara Falls, too. Right? Yep. Now, what's your background in music? Uh, heard a Neil Young song when I was seven and uh, got a guitar for my next birthday, and uh, the rest is history. Been no. playing with Anthony for about 11, 12 years now. Well, who would you say you style yourself? Uh, if you had to describe your sound or your genre, I mean, it doesn't sound like anything I've heard before, so what it, would you compare it to? Well... Yeah, it just comes from basically all the styles that we love. So we listen to a lot of music, different types of music. I would say it's, you know, rock and roll, but has like kind of weird kind of ambient feel to it yeah. as well. Ambient. We've yeah, had, uh, we found choice. it easier to do it acoustically just because we trust each other and uh, it's been working so far. So yeah, a text. bunch of bunch of different kind of styles, but all turned into an acoustic uh you know that's how the project kind of happened we were just we were in we've been in bands for years and him and i were always the one the two guys trying to force everyone to be there <laughs> so we kind of just said you know what we're gonna make a record and worst case scenarios we'll be on the road together playing shows acoustically nice you know what i mean uh, on a text message here i've got it, somebody comes in hip meet rem good sound here that's cool <laughs> that's cool 
Yeah. <laughs> Two of our favorite bands right there. Yeah, really, eh? Okay, yeah. great. What, what do you guys got coming up for live gigs? Where can we catch you? I think, well, we play a lot of local gigs uh, regularly. Like I play at Taps every Sunday. James plays at the Walk-In Cafe okay. every Tuesday night. But we're playing uh, April 26th with Die Mannequin. Oh, at a, at a private gig, intimate um, and interactive. Intimate and interactive. Ryan Johnson, our manager, right? Does uh, puts those shows on. Yeah, you so guys are part of scene at all? Uh, we, you know what? We have to apply for it, man. Just like everyone else. So right. we'll are see you, if we get in. We're still got, waiting on that. We've gotten in in the past. Last year we didn't play scene. We played up in Sudbury for the New Music Fest with the Trues and a bunch of other bands. So mm-hmm. I don't know whether that's going to happen this year again or whether we're going to be in St. Catharines. But I always ask the bands. Not that you guys are political or anything but what can we do to foster more support for you guys i mean uh, uh clark bitter was running for the green party out in niagara mm-hmm. falls you know made the statement a lot of people have put down their punch cards you know they got laid off or whatnot they're picking up the guitars and their picks right. and gun to make some some money in music so what do you think we can do politically i don't know if you got any thoughts on what we could do to foster a better culture in that. i have no idea uh, i think i think the state of music is insanely weird right now yeah I mean, Niagara Falls has picked up a bit, and uh, there's kind of a, a small community of musicians and different bands, including our, ourselves. We're just part of it, but, you know, everyone's trying to break out. But as far as the city goes, um, there's a lot of support, uh, especially as of late, which is good. So, I mean, just come on down to Niagara Falls and uh, go to the just bars. and original our, shows. Yeah, original like, shows mm-hmm. is yeah. where it's at. We hardly play. Like, there was a while where we wouldn't even play in the falls. Last summer, we played in Toronto almost every week, try to get it out of there because there wasn't really much happening. But now it seems to... I've turned around a bit. I don't know. I have mixed opinions about it, but how do you find distribution? Are you guys just are you signed to a record label? Or no, are you no, it's all independent. And so distribution the same way. Every guys, I see <laughs> SoundCloud. You know, you use that quite efficiently. Yeah, we do that. Um, our dot com right now is getting redone for a new record because we're in the studio making our second record right now. Halfway done it. So um, for distribution, man, I don't know. I, it's all just. I feel like I'm a salesman going around door to door. Even though he's been giving the CD away for, we've been giving it away for free. Our first to record, everyone, yeah. we can uh, give it to. Like anyone who would come up to us at a gig, we would. Can I have, buy one of your CDs? We'd be like, here you go, just take yeah. it for nice. the first one, and then the next one we're going to have to try to get some money back for. That's it. what but, you uh, got to do in 2014. Is that kind of a strategy? You hook them with something that uh, feels good, and you make them like the band, and then they'll pay for it. That later? was my. That was my idea. We're all about hooking people. Lost leader, eh? <laughs> we're hookers. <laughs> <laughs> James Underwood, Anthony Bonning, the band is a book for wanderers. What do you get up? You say you're at Taps? Sunday Taps nights? every Sunday, and uh, yeah, James at the walk. Now, are you I, playing as a band as well? Well, we do the two piece. Yeah, do the two yeah. piece. Yeah, we we've done a few full band shows. Like the way I write the songs, basically, is uh, I do, I kind of try to think of Neil Young. You know, what I mean, how he would write like "Hey Hey My My" electrically, but then he would tour with an acoustic guitar and do it, and it was just as good. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. Yeah, we play as a band and acoustically and both ways, whatever whatever the venue calls for, really. Cool. And what are you working on another album now? Yeah. When's that going to be up? Hopefully by like June, July. I'm hoping. Okay. Um, it all depends on when we could get in there to finish it. The guy, our producer, Ethan, he's he's a busy guy. So you recording it locally, obviously. Yeah, Winding Path Media. Niagara Lo- Falls, great studio. Yeah, it's Niagara Falls. Studio. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. We did our first record there. I've 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 never recorded with anyone else. So, um, yeah, we're we're in the middle of it now. We're gonna have a bunch of people come in and play on it. I, you know, local whoever. musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you guys go out and support other guys' shows as All well? I talk to some of the guys, and they say, you know, it's not what like it I'm used to be. There. The guys don't come out to see the other bands anymore. Well, I do. I mean, uh, it's... Yep. You know, you're on the bill a lot of the time with other bands, so you yep. know you uh, like I said, you try to get each other's back. But I try as much as busy I can. Too, Who's who are your friends in the local business? The local music. Business? We have a lot. We have a lot of friends. Uh, you know, bands like Dead Grass, we know pretty well. Uh, the Mandevilles, I love all those guys in that band. Mm-hmm. Um, they're getting a lot of pub too. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, who else? I don't know. How about talent wise? Well, Patsy and the Muscle. Patsy and the yeah, muscle, yeah, we play good with friends a lot. of ours. Um, new franchise, the ages. New franchise, the ages. There's uh, Aaron Berger is doing Aaron his thing Berger's up there. Doing a show here. Yeah, yeah. Rod Standish, Rod Standish is is a, plays on. He's played with us. He's a part. So. It, as far as I'm concerned, he's a part of the project. If there's uh, a, if there's a big event going on in Niagara Falls. Usually, one of those bands is, is playing with us, or we're playing with them. I really appreciate your time, thanks, guys. Man. Thanks, Jim. Anthony Cheers. Body. Thanks a lot, for having James us. Underwood. Cheers. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> Thanks to Alicia and Butko for running the board today. Appreciate it. We're a little bumpy, but that's okay. Tighten it up. I am Jim Fanny. You can catch us here every Sunday live at noon. Stream us online. Tweet us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. (laughs) 
Have a great Sunday, everyone. I am out of here. Bless.